exactly like the enemy team, but you're not because things that are truly important are things that you're ignoring completely. And it's hard because the enemy team is never going to tell you, yes, do this. This is how you beat us. That would be really counterproductive. Right. I mean, remember True Sight where Kuroki was like, all right, MC, you need to play like, like Seb. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, <laughs> you know, but, but he's MC, so you're going to play like MC, but kind of like Seb. Exactly. Right? So... I mean, if a player could ever do that, I think if we get to the point where we have a player, whatever position he plays in, like can just go and copy another player's playstyle for a particular draft or for whatever, I think that guy will be top five players in the world. Yeah, that is definitely a skill that really does define some of the best players is the ones who are able to pick up and adapt strategies very, very quickly. Oh, well, we'll see how this game goes for now. Uh, let's see how the lanes are. How do you find these lanes? Starting with the top, oh, actually. Oracle in trouble. No, starting with the top lane. Who do you think has the advantage here? NP is a very strong laner on center. Yeah, it's always tough to play a, uh, a melee here against double range. Uh, however, I think that it's definitely Centaur and Rubik favorite early on. As Morphin gets more levels, he becomes easier to bully the, or he's able to bully the Centaur a little bit oh, more easily. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Retaliate ten surprises some male. I was, yeah, you can see that. Until you can really attribute shift level two, it's it's tough. What about the the mid lane matchup? You were talking that Lycan you thought has a better matchup than Ember against the Void. Uh, yeah, I just think that he's not going to be bothered by anything Topson does because you have the constant regen from Feral Impulse, and you kind of just don't care. Like that. Tox is dead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. That's the whole thing about Lycan is like he's almost like DK, and where you just don't really care who you're laning against. You're just there to get farm, and then when they leave or when you decide that you're strong enough you leave um tops yeah. maybe gonna get his courier snipe no close with uh, those wolves but the wolf yeah so i think this is going to be kind of like a completely difference in styles that we're going to see here in the mid lane excalibur is definitely going to look to punish every time Thompson leaves the lane but other than that he's just going to farm and Thompson should probably also do that although it is Thompson, so he's going to get aggressive oh. and probably let end up with a kill here <laughs> Just as you said, Caster's cursed the hell out of this. Ah, uh, well, Thompson, he does have that catch, and you know, he has much more kill potential than a Lycan. Unfortunately, Lycan's only answer to these kind of movements is run back, hope that the healing gets you, and body block with wolves. Like, there's really not much else you can do. Yeah, it also just looked like Excalibur was not expecting how little damage he was going to do once that shield came out. Um, Thompson did hit level 4 right before that, I think. Either way, um... Yeah, he did. He did. He hit level four right before that, which allowed him to get the second person up. Yeah, you know, Lycan is a hero who is fine with with trading, but I think some people are often just surprised at how aggressive Topson plays. Like he yep. he's just like he almost plays chicken every single time. He just like runs at you. He trades with you. He trades with you. He trades with you, and you're like, is this a good trade for him? I don't know. But then he keeps hitting you, and eventually somebody's nerve breaks and they start running back, and then Topson's like, well, all right, I win because now I get a couple free hits and he kills you. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's surprising. A lot of uh, mid laners, when you watch him, you know, when watching enemy mid run, you just go, oh, all right, he ran away. Let's go get last hits now. But right. Thompson goes, no, this is the time to get the kill. Exactly. His back is turned. He's the weakest. Yeah. I see your point. That's, a, that's something I really see with Thompson. I think that's why he plays the Void Spirit so well as well. Void has one of the strongest laning phases I've seen from a lot of mid laners, with that Resident Pulse being just ridiculously good, especially against certain heroes. And he abuses that very well. Yeah, it's probably not not fair. <laughs> Should probably be nerfed a little bit, but uh, he, he definitely plays it extremely well, and you can see him actually going for more points in pulse. Uh, there's a uh, nature prophet dying in the top lane. He does go for more points in pulse. No surprise against a Lycan, to be honest. Yep. Your kill potential is less than your survival or need for survival. And finally, we haven't really talked about this one, but the the bottom lane. How do you find the Ember will fare against the Sanking? We're already seeing he's gonna have a bit of a tough time. Do you think the Ember can uh, withstand the Sanking's punishment most of the time? Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. He just he fares at a, a bottle, so Zetrax is going to have a little bit extra regen. Um, look for him to try and secure some of the bounties. There is a wraparound coming to the mid lane. Yeah, they're converging mid. Disruption plus Sprout with a body block from the Treens. They should be able to kill Excalibur. Uh, they didn't put an Aether Remnant down, though, so that allows them to just get away with this. Singularity looking for a kill on Saxa. There's no counter kill either. It was just simple rotation. They were hoping to get a kill on Excalibur, but I was, I was thinking they were going to use the Aether Remnant there to stun him, but they. 
Yeah, it was a, I would say it's a little bit of a sloppy rotation by OG. Kind of uncharacteristic. Maybe they're still waking up. Uh, but anytime they make a play like that, you have to immediately look for uh, rotations elsewhere. And we can see that No-Tail, knowing that the supports were kind of in the mid lane, he's going to go snag the bounty runes top. Uh, yep. OG is probably the best team in the world at doing this, where they... Wow, what micro? Oh, I thought he got that. <laughs> Uh, bottom lane, they do get uh, Zidorax though with a kill here mid one, and Thompson also merges Excalibur at the same time. So while we're watching that bounty rune almost being taken. OG is doing their plays, and this is what they do, as you mentioned, right? This is what they're good at. Every movement has a purpose, and everyone is moving at the same time. Nobody's ever idle in this. Exactly. That's the thing and with OG no is if you see a rotation that is maybe not okay. successful, you have to look somewhere else for another rotation, because they're always, always DMC rotating. is trying to get No-Tail out to deny himself, but the stomp from Roshan oh, gets No-Tail. Little, nice little cheeky play. And just like that, all three heroes at the top of the last hit chart belong to the OG side of things. Even the Morphling having a pretty good lane, actually kind of dominating Hesta Joe with that higher base damage. Um, or Maybe even just out, out mechanicing him, uh, because Centaur is is pretty good at last hitting himself. Yeah, I mean he's he's been doing he's been doing okay for being up against a lane where Samael got the only attribute shift and they kind of left Hester Joy alone. But it, it's just tough. You what are you supposed to do here? You always know that the threat of No Tail is lurking. And you can't really do much against that. There's an Ascanking kill here in the bottom lane as well. He tried to get a bit cocky, but uh, killed off because of it. Bad positioning. The end, body blocking in the top lane. There's a train starting to get Heste Joy. I don't know if this is going to be a kill. This is impossible. I'll let him go. By the way, Soul Ring on Sanking as his first item. Interesting. I have not seen this. on. A yeah, um, looks like he's probably going to be going for the Tranquil Boots build. San uh... Sol Ring Tranquil has become a little bit more popular, and it kind of fits how OG wants to play this game, right? 100% uptime, oh. all the time. That was almost a good initiation, but unfortunately, they missed time. That mid one will not get the Burrow Strike. And they also had a Fate Seat there, though, so chance of him dying was low anyway. I really like these wards by OG, by the way. They've got one watching the river for the rune, and they have one behind the Tier 1 tower, which is going to allow Thompson to play super aggressive here in the mid lane. aggressive as we almost catch dnz another great aether remnant thompson is really looking for the skill on dnz because he's just trying to sap some experience in the top lane same with his joy kicking him out here the bottom lanes where singularity has a bit of control as mid one you know he's sandstorming to farm but he can't really push out the ember out of the lane but it's tough because i feel like og's already choking them right now we are not seeing singularity being able to really propose anything anywhere yeah i think the first move will probably come out once excalibur finishes this uh, helm of the dominator pretty yep. close to finishing it up only about 400 gold away and then i would expect some sort of either high pressure in the mid lane although you probably want to go top and and shove sumail out of the safe lane now mid one dies in the bottom lane no problem here zitrax guaranteeing the skill the two supports rotate for this but it's worth it he almost got level six on the rubik and the oracle now and these supports singularity has put a lot of uh, emphasis on them getting level six early and they actually have more experience than both the enemy supports which is probably good for them. They're looking for this mid game. They're looking for the strength of the Rubik and the Oracle. And Oracle's pretty decent with Lycan as well. We talked about Troll, but you know, Oracle Lycan is okay. Yeah, definitely. I I think that the Oracle is being picked here, you know, not necessarily with a save in mind, but more so the magic damage resist and, and just the fact that he's a good hero with a root. But gonna get run down here by Tops and just not enough save from the Rubik who's only level five and he's actually in trouble himself. There's nothing you can do. DNZ, Stampede. Oh, oh, never mind. Sorry, I spoke too soon. The Stampede was there. So they can actually counter Thompson. There's no Astral Step right now. Thompson is going to be run down. Excalibur, a second before he gets the Helm of the Dominator, he acknowledges he needs that shapeshift. Do bite Thompson to death. That's really good, actually. Uh, support for a carry trade or mid laner trade. It is, but look where it happened. This is something that we saw over and over and over yesterday, which is that teams are unable to take fights on OG's side of the map. It's always deep That's in true. their own jungle, super far away from any objectives that you can claim afterwards. Again, it's a good kill, but Lycan Shapeshift is now down, which means that he can't play aggressively for another 80 seconds, which means that OG has another 80 seconds to just get more levels and fortify their own position. 
That's a very good point, actually. Oh, mid one, be careful here. I don't know. I think he wants to fight this. He gets a double stun. Nicely done. As the rotation comes in from the Shadow Demon. Gonna get killed on DNZ, but Zidrex also nearby. No Till might die here. DNZ, however, against three. No Till dies first. Two those wolves. Really annoying. Socks the next target. And Zidrex wants to go for him as well. Courier they kill the courier here. quickly for mid one, but they just try to fight against the outpost. They end up winning this outpost battle. OJ at least gets to keep the outpost under control. They do lose two here from the process. Uh, I actually don't know. I want to see what the experience changes for that. So the total experience they gained there, 849. I think it's actually beneficial. Ends oh, up being a win for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think they underestimated 